Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Gabby and welcome. Now today's case is one that I'm really excited to get to. It's one that I had kind of set to the side because there's just so much information to it. I want to take some extra time on it. This case was requested by Lauren Maxwell. So thank you so much for your request. And it's going to be a little bit more of a longer video. So with that being said, I just want to get into it. So let's get into it. In 1994, as Christmas was nearing, Dwan Sims was a four-year-old little boy, one who loved watching TV, especially Power Rangers, a little boy who had his entire life ahead of him. At four years old, you don't even know what the term endangered missing even means, but this little boy would be classified that from December 11th, 1994 up to current times. Standing only three feet tall and weighing 50 pounds, he was small, but not small enough to not be seen on a security camera, which he wasn't the day he went missing from the Wonderland Mall in Livonia, Michigan. Missing children's cases are far from rare. There are about 800,000 missing children reported every year. Now, a majority of those end very well with the child being found and everything being taken care of. But some of those end very badly, and some of those remain a mystery where people are left wondering what exactly happened to this child. Dwan Sims is one of those children. According to Dwan's mother, Dwana Harris, who was 25 years old at the time, her and Dwan left their home at about 1.30 p.m. to head to the Wonderland Mall to do some Christmas shopping. This mall was not far from their residence, so she claimed they arrived at the mall around 1.40 to 2 p.m. She said she parked her Ford Thunderbird in the mall parking lot and walked with her son to the mall entrance between Target and Famous Footwear. When they got to the mall, the first place they really went was Target because it was right there. They spent a little time looking around and Dwan had his eye on a VHS tape and Dwana told him that they couldn't get the VHS tape because the line was too long at Target. So they left Target, entering through the main part of the mall through the East Mall entrance door. According to Dwana, when they first left Target, Dwan was right next to her walking, and then as they walked a little bit farther, he was behind her and she was talking to him the entire time. She says she remembers getting to where the KB toy store was and she asked Dwan a question and he didn't answer. She turned around and he was gone. Now I hate to sound super judgmental of a mother's decision because I am not a mother myself. I don't really know what goes through a mother's head. I know it's very stressful and you're not thinking straight a lot of the times, but I don't understand why he was walking behind her. Yes, the mall was a little bit crowded because it was near Christmas time, but that's even more of a reason for you to keep a better eye on your child. I get that it's very hectic, but I don't know why she wasn't holding his hand. From my research, she didn't have any bags with her, no shopping bags or anything, so her hands were free. She could have been holding his hand or had her hand on his shoulder or had him walking in front of her so she could see where he was. I just, I really don't understand why she didn't have a better eye on him. Duana said at this point she thought he went into the toy store, so she went into KB Toys and looked aisle by aisle searching for him, but he wasn't there. So she went to all the surrounding stores and still couldn't find him. She told authorities she looked for him for over a half an hour. She finds a cleaning lady. This is the first person she saw that really works at the mall who could maybe help her that wasn't an employee doing something else. So she tells the cleaning lady what happened and the cleaning lady notifies security at the Wonderland Mall. Dwana and security for about an hour search the mall and try to find her son and they can't find him anywhere so they decide to call the Livonia Police Department. A huge search is being done at this point and they notified every employee working in the mall. Every store told them what was going on, that there was a little boy missing. They gave them a description of what Dwan Sims looked like so every employee could be on the lookout in case he came into one of their stores. A group of officers of the Livonia Police Department were sent over and they looked everywhere in the mall. Sometimes I mention on my channel how police don't do a thorough search. These officers searched very, very well. They looked in every corner of every store, bathroom, the food court, the parking lot, the movie theater, anywhere a child could be hiding and he was nowhere to be found. 
they didn't just search once, they searched twice, they searched three times, they searched so many times and there was just no trace of Dwan. So then two officers took Dwana and they went to the Target store to look around and kind of retrace her steps and they talked to employees at Target who told them that there are security cameras at the entrance and exit doors of the store. They talked to security at Target and security let them know that yes the security cameras were on at the times when Dwana said that her and Dwan entered and exited the store. So Duana and Duan should be on those tapes. So Duana, a security guard, and two Livonia police officers are watching the tape from the exit door of Target. And at about 1.44 p.m. in the tape, Duana says, there I am. And she points to a woman and a small child that she claims was her and Duan. So right now, they're watching the tape. And in the security tape, the woman and the small boy are going to leave Target. And the woman stops the small boy and talks to him. And at this point, Dwana says to the two police officers and security, yes, I remember this happening. This is when I told Dwan that we can't get the VHS tape and we have to leave the store. So then in the tape, the woman and the little boy are leaving the store. And Dwana says, yes, I remember us going that way. So the woman and the little boy are out of view of the camera right now and authorities decide to watch the tape a little bit longer because Dwan went missing not that much longer after she left Target. So if somebody abducted him from behind her back, they wouldn't abduct him and then go in front of her. So they would probably make their way back to the Target area in the opposite direction. So they're watching the tape a little bit longer and they see nobody come in the opposite direction with Dwan. So police ask security if they can enlarge the still of the woman and the small child in the security footage and security says that yes, they can do that so they enlarge the image. They can see right off the bat that the woman in the film is wearing what looks like a brown jacket with a hood with a white emblem on it and she's also wearing a baseball cap. They look at Dwana who's sitting right next to them and they can see that she's wearing a black jacket without a hood, no emblem on it, and she's not wearing a baseball cap. So the woman in the security footage is not Dwana Harris. They mention these differences in apparel to Dwana and she insists, after sitting there for a few minutes quiet, she insists that that is definitely her, that the jacket is black, that that's not a hood, that's her collar, and she doesn't mention anything about the baseball cap. And they kind of just look at her like, that's definitely not you in the tape. Unless you went and changed after your son disappeared, that's not you. And she sits there, she's quiet for a few more seconds, she doesn't really know what to say. And then she says, well, I guess that's not me. So they looked through video footage from an hour before she said she arrived at the mall to an hour after he supposedly went missing and Dwan was on none of this footage and there was no witnesses at all that claimed to have seen the two together in the mall. Of course you can never 100% rely on witness accounts but there were witnesses who claimed to have seen Dwana arrive at the mall and Dwana was alone. There were two separate people that said that they saw Dwana arrive at the Wonderland Mall and she was by herself. She was not with Dwan. She was not with a small child. Nobody else was with her. She was alone. They never found any security footage of Dwana or Dwan at the mall. And you're probably wondering, well, Dwana was in the mall. How was she on none of the security footage? Well, there is one entrance of the mall that didn't have a security camera videotaping it. And a lot of people think she possibly went through that entrance but it's unknown, it, it's just she did not enter through the door that she said she entered through. That's just point blank. She was not in Target. There's no way she was in Target because she was not on the tapes through the entrance door or the exit door. As Shelley Holloway once said, we're pretty confident Dwan never made it to the Wonderland Mall. Now, I really hate bringing up rumors when it comes to a case. The only time I bring up rumors is if they're basically qualified as theories because there's some bit of evidence to back them up. But a large portion of people that are familiar with this case and have researched into it and authorities think that Dwana Harris had something to do with her son's disappearance. But you do have to look at demeanor. Demeanor does tell a lot unless you're a really good actress or actor. Demeanor tells 
a big story and according to security guard Randy Pfeiffer who was working that day he was one of the first people who really tried to help Dwana find Dwan. He said that Dwana Harris's demeanor was that of a mother who had just lost her son. He said that she was going in and out of crying, she didn't really know what to say, she was fumbling over her words, so she did look like a concerned parent. You're probably also wondering about Dwan's father. Him and Dwana at the time were separated. Dwana was seeing somebody else and he showed up to the mall once he was notified about what had happened and there is no suspicion that Dwan's father had anything to do with it. He showed up and acted like he had no idea what was going on. He was very frantic and he kind of looked at Dwana in a how could you even let this happen sort of way, why didn't you have a better eye on him, I can't believe this happened. He tried to talk to police as much as he could, tried to help out in any way that he could. He was definitely a very, very worried parent. According to Dwana, she claimed that police did not look for her son very well. She chopped it up to it being because of his race and the fact that he was African American. She claimed that they were more concerned with cases of missing Caucasian individuals. This is obviously a very sensitive subject and I know I'm going to get hate for this because I get hate for everything I say on my channel whether it's controversial or not, but obviously there are cases in this world that are not taken as seriously because they have to do with an individual that is not white. I said it. I know a case firsthand. I'm not gonna go into too much detail because that's not my place, but somebody that I used to go to school with, he died in a very tragic way and he was African American and I saw and everybody saw what his family went through and especially his mother trying to find out anything from police and years later she is still trying to get them to help her in any way and they just won't. It, it's disgusting and everybody knows it is because he is a different race. So this does happen. It's not a lie. It's not bullcrap. You can say what you want, but it does happen. But with this case of Dwan Sims, most everyone who really looks into it does not think that is the case. The Livonia Police Department really, really tried to find this little boy. When I say that they literally tore that mall apart, they tore it apart. They were breaking down walls, they were looking in every corner of that mall, they were looking in the parking lot, every bathroom, places that were not even used at the time. They looked everywhere and there was no proof that he was ever in this mall to begin with. They expanded the search to areas around the mall. They expanded it to Dwana's home, areas around her home. They spent hours and hours and hours looking at footage. They had nothing. There are officers and there are security guards that still to this day think about this case and think about what else they could have possibly done. I mean, it eats away at some people. At first, security was very positive. They thought everything would be okay because they have kids going missing in the mall all the time. Kids wander off, get lost in the crowd. So Randy Pfeiffer told Duana that everything was going to be okay. After a few hours of finding nothing, they were beginning to lose hope. They had never experienced anything like this before in the mall. Every child that ever went missing in this mall before had been found. Because they had this happen on the regular with kids going missing in the mall, they didn't really take it too seriously. Every child that went missing in this mall before were found 30 minutes later, an hour later, sometimes 10 to 15 minutes later. They were all found very quickly, so they just didn't think it was going to stem into this huge search. Because of this, security didn't notify police until about an hour into searching. And they really, in today's time, beat themselves up about this because they think maybe if we notify police 30 minutes earlier, they would have been able to find him. But that's if he was ever in the mall to begin with. The day that Dwan went missing, a few hours into it, they started questioning Dwana and they questioned her for a long time. They were trying to get the entire story, where she came from, where she was going after the mall, what they were planning on buying there, how long they were staying, if she knew anybody who had it out for her everything you could think of and very quickly Dwana became quite overwhelmed and uncooperative. 
but according to Duana, they interrogated her for 18 hours. But according to police, they only questioned her that long because she wasn't really helping them much. One strange thing that I do have to mention is Duana's mother, Beverly, was working at the mall that day on the opposite end at Lady Foot Locker. This was something that Duana did not mention to security when they were looking for Duan. She did not mention that her mother was in the mall also, Duan's biological grandmother, which is just very strange. She did mention this to police when they showed up, but not to security when they were initially searching for him. A lot of people find this odd because possibly in a little kid's mind, he wandered off and then he tried to find his grandmother because she worked in the mall and knew where she was located and maybe something happened along the way. They could have looked at security tapes from that direction. I mean, the fact she didn't mention this is very weird. Police were starting to think Duana may have had some involvement in her son's disappearance. It's not that Duana was acting suspicious, it's just nothing she was saying to authorities was matching up. Her timeline didn't make any sense because there was just no proof of it on tape. Also, I did mention before how Duana was watching the security tapes and she was pointing out that the woman and the little boy looked like her and she thought it was her. She did this quite a few times. I mean, she pointed out a couple people that she said was definitely her and Duan. At one point, she actually pointed out a little girl that she said might have been Duan, which obviously it wasn't because it's a little girl. They looked at every bit of security footage from that mall, from places where Duana said her and her son were, and there was no proof that she was in the mall with her son, none. Now it kind of switches from where's this little boy in this mall to was this little boy ever in this mall at all? Because the only person who claimed he was in the Wonderland Mall on December 11th, 1994 was his mother. The next Monday after his disappearance, they brought Duana back to the mall to retrace her steps. Hundreds of people showed up, even the local news stations. She went over her entire path she took on the day of December 11th, 1994, but this didn't help police much more in the search at all. I do have to give it to police with this case because they really did try. I mean, they even brought in a psychic, which didn't really help much because in a lot of cases they bring in psychics and sometimes it doesn't really go anywhere but psychics usually pick up if they are legitimate psychics because I believe in psychics but I think a lot of them are frauds but if they are a real psychic if you don't bring them to the right location where something happened they can't really pick up on anything so maybe Dwan was never in the mall. That's just the entire point. You can't really blame police because there was just nothing for them to go off of. After Dwan disappeared, there were no ransom notes, there were no phone calls from people claiming that they had him in their custody, there were no phone calls of people who claimed to have seen him. There was just nothing. Dwana Harris took two polygraph tests. The first test, she failed. The second test, she became so frustrated that she ended up ripping the paper from the machine and leaving because she was failing again. Of course, polygraph tests are not always the best way of telling if somebody is innocent or not, but I've just never really seen anybody act this way. Police were very taken aback by this. I mean, possibly she was just very frustrated because they were even considering her a suspect, but it's just a very suspicious thing to do. Duan's grandmother Beverly said about Duana, she doesn't smile anymore, she functions, but there's no spirit in her. I have always believed and have to keep believing that one day my baby is going to walk in the door. He might not be a baby anymore, but he'll be back. From the research I've done, Duana moved away not long after Duan went missing, which everybody deals with things differently, but I've never really seen a case where the parent or parents move away within a short period of time after their child disappears. In most cases, parents decide to stay in the area because they want to help in the search some more down the line, or they want to be in contact with police as much as possible. Sometimes parents will move residences, they'll move homes because it's just too hard to be in the home anymore, but not from the area so quickly. There are some parents that don't change their phone numbers for 50 plus years because they think that one day their child may call home again. In August of 1996, Duana Harris was jailed for an assault charge. 
she pulled two knives on her significant other at the time. So no matter whether you believe that Duana is guilty for her son's disappearance or not, this does prove that Duana can do something drastic. You could chop it up to just all her emotions being built up inside of her over everything that happened the last couple years. People do snap, that does happen. But from what I read, she pulled the knives on her husband at the time because he went out for the day with his child and left her at home with their baby. And she became very angry over this and she threatened his life. Now, I don't think that's anything to threaten anyone's life over. I also have to mention that when Duan was little, his grandmother took out a life insurance policy on him. And a lot of people think that this is very, very suspicious but I don't really find this that suspicious because this life insurance policy that she took out, yes, the family would get money if he passed away, but it was mostly for college, which is what she claimed. This was a life insurance policy that money was put away for when he turned a certain age, whether that's 18 or 21, most of the time 18, so a lot of people do this. This doesn't really look that weird in my opinion. Duana through the years insisted that police did not do what they were supposed to do, which just isn't the case because the Livonia Police Department literally spent $43,000 paying their officers in overtime that year just to work on this case. I mean, most of the officers that year didn't even really see their families that much around Christmas time because they were trying to find this little boy. So in today's time, we still have no proof that Dwan Sims was ever in the mall on December 11th, 1994, on the day that he supposedly went missing. Dwan's grandmother, Beverly, was always very cooperative with police. She did believe that her daughter, Dwana, was innocent, but she tried to help as much as she could. Dwan's father was the same exact way. He was very cooperative, tried to do everything he could. He kept in contact with police through the years. As for Dwana, she married her then boyfriend three months after Dwan went missing, which is very strange that your son is missing and you have time to plan a wedding, but she did. She moved away. She became very distant. She went through years of therapy. She went on to have other children and not really mention Duan at all to them. She was sick of the harassing. She wanted to be left alone. She just kind of fell off the face of the earth. As for the Wonderland Mall, it closed in 2007. This case is still open to this day, but they are not currently searching. Dwan Sims was an African-American male with black hair and brown eyes, three feet tall, weighing 50 pounds. On the day he went missing, he was supposedly wearing a three-quarter length winter jacket over a yellow, blue, and green windbreaker. He had on dark blue sweatpants and low-top Fila sneakers. If you have any information at all regarding the disappearance of Dwan Sims, you are urged to call 911 or 1 800 843 5678 or the Livonia Police Department's Missing Persons Unit at 1 734 421 2900. As I was researching into this case, it reminded me a lot of the disappearance of Marlena Childress. I will link that video down below if you want to watch that but both cases have to do with the disappearance of a four-year-old whose mother has a story that just doesn't really add up and both mothers go on to commit a crime later on. Both cases contain rumors where the mother possibly sold their child or possibly they did something on accident or on purpose and they tried to cover it up. Like I said before, I try to not focus too much on rumors. I don't know what happened but a lot of people think that Duana had something to do with her son's disappearance because she did go on to marry her boyfriend at the time only three months after Duan disappeared and possibly she wanted to get rid of him because he was from a previous relationship. This is all just speculation, but I obviously had to put it in this video so you guys know kind of the backstory of why people think she would have done this to her son. There was a man that came forward sometime later claiming that he was Dwan Sims, but it turned out that he wasn't. 
the point is is that something happened to this little boy he or his remains are somewhere and somebody knows something that is just the entire point of everything he is somewhere if you ask me I do not personally think that Dwan Sims was at that mall that day and a lot of people talk about police cover-ups and that they don't do their job correctly but there was no time for them to really cover up anything they went straight to the security cameras and looked at them and there was no evidence something that I personally just do not understand about this case and not even as somebody who researches cases all the time just as like a normal person that would hear about this case if I went to a store and something happened no matter what that is and I was curious about what exactly happened on the security tapes like I want to see it go down I want to see everything that happened and we're watching the security tapes and I'm nowhere on the tape knowing that I was there I would I would be freaking out I'd be like where am I I know I was here at this time how can I not be on the tapes and she was never like that. She was never really surprised that she wasn't on the tapes. She was just pointing out to everybody she possibly could on the tapes that could maybe be her or Dwan, but they weren't. Let me know your opinions down below in the comments. Let me know what you think. And of course, let me know any more cases or videos in general that you want me to do on my channel. I love you guys so much. And if you're not already, definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys. Also, if you guys want to know a little bit more about this case, News and Politics did an entire podcast where they also spoke to security guard Randy Pfeiffer, so definitely go check that out. I'll have that link down below in the description. And of course, as always, a huge shout out to my patrons. I'm going to be uploading an exclusive video for you guys in a couple days, so stay tuned for that. I love you guys so much.